Hey everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. Today we're answering questions from Google, starting off with when scuba, and we're just gonna see where that takes us. Humans living near bodies of water have been swimming underneath that water to hunt and gather resources just forever, basically. But that was mainly breath holding, obviously. There are records of people around 500 BC using hollow reeds as snorkels to stay under the water undetected for naval sabotage. Um, but modern scuba diving as we know it, with compressed air and a regulator, is really from around 1943 when Jacques Cousteau and Emile Gagnon created their aqualung. We've had, or we would have had, surface-fed helmets and rebreathers since like the 1800s, but with open circuit and TV shows like Sea Hunt and The Silent World, recreational scuba diving in the 50s and the 60s really started to become more and more popular. So around the 1940s and 50s. Diving and just staying under the water had existed for a while before the self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, scuba, came along, but it was fairly large and clunky equipment with like surface-fed hoses kind of pumping air down to you and just constant heavy gear to try and keep you down on the bottom and you're walking along the bottom. It wasn't particularly fun, uh, it was more of a, a career and equipment that would, you would use for that specific career. Cousteau wanted something light and free to allow divers to enjoy unencumbered swimming and just go wherever they wanted. Diving bells, the helmets, the hoses, they're all expensive and quite limiting. There were some rebreathers uh, that divers had modified from the military, but the Aqualung demand valve was cheap, it was simple, and it was safe. How early can you scuba dive? For most training agencies, the youngest that you can usually learn to scuba dive or at least start to go under the water is eight years old. Most training agencies, you can start out at eight, but you won't actually get a qualification to go diving in the open ocean until you're 10. When you're eight and nine, you'll be confined to a safe swimming pool with an instructor. But as soon as you reach 10 years old, you can start to venture out into open water with another certification. You're gonna be limited to the depths that you can go to, but at 15, then you can go a little bit deeper. It's kind of a hot debate right now because not all kids mature and can handle the demands of scuba diving at the same age. So when you're deciding whether to learn to scuba dive, it's important to make sure that you're actually up to the task and not just the right age because eight is usually the youngest when you can learn to start to dive. It depends where you're diving. Um, you need to keep an eye on the weather reports for diving so that you know what the conditions are going to be like, what they have been like, and what exposure protection you should wear. The time of year can play a really big part as that dictates water temperature, the local wildlife that you're probably hopefully going to see, visibility and just crowd sizes of other divers in the area. Popular dive sites can get pretty crowded at certain times of the year. If you're diving off the shoreline then of course you need to take tides into account. Slack tide is usually the best time to head out when there's minimal water movement. High tide is quite nice because it draws in clear ocean water so you get better visibility, but for safety, slack tide is usually the best. You can dive whenever, but calm, warm weather is usually the best. It depends what you're after, but wind and rain can usually just ruin a dive. Wind kind of picks up the surface, so it's a bit more turbulent. Rain can actually scatter the sunlight, so it ends up being a little bit darker, and no one likes getting changed and getting ready in the rain. And the water is running from the land out to sea, bringing any debris with it that can just reduce your visibility. Warm, brilliant sunshine is really nice in a lot of areas, but in some areas it will increase algal bloom, which again reduces visibility, but only in some areas. In general, look for calm days after a calm period of weather. Um, if the weather's been particularly rubbish lately, it can be worth waiting a little while for some better visibility. 
Hopefully that answered a few questions. Uh, if you have any questions you'd like answered, use the hashtag AskMark in your comment below and I'll get on it on next week's Ask Mark. Don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com for the latest scuba diving equipment. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. Thank you.